if we want to find the uh, derivative of inverse functions like uh, sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, and so on. And so first, let's uh, review. Let's do a, uh, a review of uh, inverse trig functions. Recall that the sine of uh, pi over six is one half, and therefore the sine inverse of one half is pi over six. If we have sine of pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 over 2, then sine inverse of the square root of 2 over 2 would be pi over 4. If we have uh, sine, we know that the sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, is the square root of 3 over 2, and therefore sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2 will be pi over 3. And then sine of uh, sine of uh, pi over two, which is ninety degrees, is one, and therefore sine of one, sine inverse of one, is pi over two. And then of course sine of zero is zero, and therefore sine inverse of zero is zero. And then similarly for the cosine inverse, tangent inverse, cotangent inverse, and so on. And now let's. Uh, we want to show that the derivative of sine inverse is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so first, let y be this function right here, let y be sine inverse of x. So if y is equal to sine inverse, then that means sine of y is equal to x. So once again, the logic is this, if sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi over 2, then sine of pi over 2 must equal to 1. Here we have y equal to sine inverse of x, therefore the sine of y must equal to x. And so right here, this means that sine of some angle y is equal to x, and recall that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse x is the same as x over 1. And so we have uh, y is the angle y right here, angle y, and then this is the opposite, this is the hypotenuse. And so x is the opposite side, y of 1 is the hypotenuse. And then from here, the cosine of the angle y, recall that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And therefore, it'd be uh, 1 over, uh, it'd be the, the adjacent is the square root of 1 minus x squared, and it's over 1. And uh, now let's back up and uh, see how we got this side right here to be 1 over x squared. Remember that we got the sine of y is equal to x over 1, and therefore this angle is y. And the opposite side is x, and the hypotenuse is 1. But how did we get the adjacent side to be the square root of 1 minus x squared? And so let's call the adjacent side right here, just call it a, a for adjacent. And so we know from uh, this is a right triangle, so we have x squared, and then plus the adjacent side squared is equal to 1 squared. So it's x squared plus y squared equal to 1 squared, plus a squared is equal to 1 squared. And so we have a squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. And so this 1 squared is 1, and then subtract x squared from both sides, and then we get a squared to be 1 minus x squared. And then take the square root of both sides, and since a represents the uh, side here, then we just need the positive. So it would be just the positive 1 minus x squared. And so that's how we got the adjacent side to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so the cosine of the angle y will be adjacent dividing by hypotenuse which is the square root of 1 minus x squared dividing by 1. And then, so we end up with the square root of y, square root of 1 minus x squared. 
And so now we have the equation cosine of y is equal to the square root of uh, 1 minus x squared. And And now we let's go back to this equation right here. And once again, we're looking for the derivative of uh, sine inverse of x. And we call the y, we let y be sine inverse of x. Then by definition of inverse function, sine of y is equal to x. And so now we have the equation x is equal to sine of y. And so let's differentiate this function, this equation right here implicitly. And so the derivative of x is just 1 with respect to x. So here we're doing derivative with respect to x. And the derivative of sine of y, first we do the regular derivative, which is cosine of y. So derivative of sine of y is cosine of y. And then we have to multiply by dy dx, which is y prime. Since we uh, Differentiates we uh, we are differentiating with respect to x and the variable here is y, so that's why we have to multiply by dy dx, and then dividing both sides by cosine of y, then we get y prime or dy dx is equal to one over cosine of y. But one, but the cosine of y is the square root of one minus x squared, and therefore the derivative of the sine in of the derivative of y is one over the square root of one minus x squared. But y the sine of in y the sine inverse of x, and here this is y prime or the derivative of sine inverse of x. And therefore, the derivative of sine inverse of x is 1 over 1 minus x squared. And now let's, uh, so we have just found that the derivative of sine inverse of x is uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And now let's find the derivative of this function right here. So here we have 21 times arc sine. Arc sine is also sine inverse of uh, 4x minus 2. And so again, we have the function 21 times uh, sine inverse or arc sine of 4x minus 2, and we want to find the derivative. If we just have uh, sine inverse of x, then this is the derivative. But here we have sine inverse of 4x minus 2, and so we have to use the... Uh, chain rule right here. So this would be 21 and then the um, the derivative sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so we have uh, sine inverse of the expression 1 minus x of 4x minus 2 then in the place of x right here, we put 4x minus 2. So it would be 1 over, and then 1 minus. So in the place of this x, we have 4x minus 2. And then the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the 4x minus 2. And so now we're going to this and the derivative of uh, 4x minus 2 which is 4 and so the final answer would be just 84 21 times 1 times 4 is 84 and then dividing by it is square root right here. and this is the answer Earlier, we have shown, uh, we have proved that the derivative of sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we uh, go through that process all over again, then we will see that the derivative of cosine inverse is negative 1, dividing by the square root of 1 minus x squared. 
And so instead of one, it being negative one. And so this is our second formula right here. And so now let's find the derivative of uh, three sine in cosine inverse, uh, arc cosine of uh, x over five. So once again, if we just x here, then we get x squared right here. But since this is x over five, then in the place of this x, we put x over five. So we'll replace this x right here with x over 5. And then the chain rule is we have to multiply by the derivative of x over 5. And let's go ahead and rewrite the uh, x over 5 so we can get the derivative easier. Now x over 5 is the same as 1 fifth times x. And therefore, we get uh, this. The derivative of one fifth x is just one fifth. And so the final answer, we get negative three, be three times negative one times one, be negative three. And then for the bottom, we get five times this expression right here. And again here, earlier we uh, proved that the derivative sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we go through that process or over again, we will also find that the derivative of tangent inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so this is the derivative of tangent inverse of x. And now we want to find the derivative of the uh, tangent inverse of e to the 2x. Now if we just have arc tangent of x, then this is the derivative right here. But since we have uh, arc tangent of e to the 2x, then in the place of x right here, we would put e to the 2x. And then the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of e to the 2x. And then now we need to do the derivative of e to the 2x. And uh, we have to use the chain rule again. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the 2x will be e to the 2x, and then times the derivative of the 2x. And the derivative of 2x is just 2, and so for this part, we end up with e to the 2x times 2. And so it would be 2 times e to the 2x. And then this is um, e to the 2x squared, so we multiply these two exponents, so we get 1 plus e to the 4x. And this is the answer.